Hello. In today's video, we shall learn in detail about genus Pythium. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding about the structure of Pythium debrianum, its mode of reproduction, and about its life cycle. Let us start with the introduction to genus Pythium. Pythium is a genus of class Oomycetes belonging to the family Pythaceae. Pythium species are eukaryotic, having true nuclei, cenocytic, and are filamentous. Cell wall of Pythium is composed of cellulose and glucan with a small amount of chitin. It may live saprophytically in moist humus soil or parasitically in the hypocotyle of seedlings of various land plants. The hyphae of Pythium may be intracellular or intercellular. The asexual or vegetative stage of Pythium produce thick wall spores called chlamydospores or sporangia. It may germinate directly to produce hypha or may indirectly give rise to vesicle within which the zoospores are formed. Sexual reproduction takes place by fertilization of oogonium by antheridium to produce thick-walled oospore. Common widespread diseases caused by pythium are the damping of soft rot, wheat rot, foot rot of seedlings and many others. The most common species of pythium is Pythium debrianum. It causes damping of disease of tobacco, tomato, etc. Excessive moisture or dampness, presence of decaying vegetable matter in soil, overcrowding of the seedlings, insufficient exposure to air and light are a few factors that promote fungal growth. We shall take up Pythium debrianum to describe the general life history of Pythium. The mycelial plant body of Pythium debrianum represents the vegetative or somatic phase of the fungus. It consists of slender, cylindrical, haline, cenocytic hyphae. The hyphae within the host tissues are both intracellular and intercellular. They do not produce hostoria. The hyphal wall contains cellulose and glucans. The haline cytoplasm contains numerous scattered nuclei, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes. Reserve food is in the form of glycogen. Let us study about the reproduction in Pythium. Reproduction takes place by both sexual and asexual method. Asexual reproduction takes place with the help of zoospores produced in small globosporangia. They are formed singly at the terminal end of the hyphae. Each sporangium is a multinucleate structure separated from the rest of the hypha by a septum. The sporangium contains numerous nuclei. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this video, please like and share the video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Now, we shall try to understand the indirect germination of sporangia. Under wet conditions, 
the sporangia remain attached to the hyphae and function as zoosporangia. A papilla or beak-like outgrowth called exit tube is formed in the mature zoosporangium. It swells up into a thin-walled balloon-like membranous vesicle. The numerous uninucleate daughter protoplasts from the zoosporangium migrate through the exit tube into the vesicle and get differentiated into zoospores. The vesicle bursts when the zoospores are mature. The biflagellate zoospores have tinsel flagellum and whiplash flagellum which help them to swim in water. The zoospore comes to rest, retracts its flagella and gets encysted by secreting a wall around itself. The encysted zoospore later germinates by a germ tube and infects a fresh seedling. Next is direct germination of zoosporangium. In dry atmosphere, the sporangia get detached from the hyphae and are dispersed by wind or water. On reaching a suitable host, the sporangium germinates by a germ tube which enters the host either through a stoma or through an epidermal cell and forms the mycelium. Asexual reproduction also takes place by the formation of gemme and chlamydospores. Next, we shall learn about the sexual reproduction in Pythium. It is oogamous and takes place during unfavorable conditions at the end of the growing season. Pythium debarianum is homothallic. The male sex organ antheridium and the female sex organ ugonium develop in close proximity either on the same hypha or different hyphae embedded in the host tissue. Both the sex organs are cut off from the hyphae by the formation of septa. The tip of the female branch swells and gets filled with number of nuclei and cytoplasm and functions as a young ugonium. The protoplast of the ugonium gets differentiated into a large central glandular denser part, the ooplasm, and a peripheral thin spongy portion containing a layer of cytoplasm called the periplasm. All nuclei except one migrate to the periplasm. The ooplasm possesses only a single nucleus. Antheridium is club-shaped multinucleate cell formed at the tip of the male branch arising from the stalk of the ugonium. The inflated portion at the tip is the antheridium. The protoplast of the mature antheridium becomes uninucleate. Fertilization is brought about by means of a fertilization tube developed on the antheridium. The fertilization tube penetrates the ugonial wall, pierces the periplasm and reaches the ooplasm. It introduces a male nucleus with a certain amount of cytoplasm into an egg. The male nucleus fuses with the egg nucleus. The fertilized egg secretes a thick smooth wall and changes into an oospore or a resting spore. Prior to germination, the oospore nucleus undergoes zygotic meiosis. Next step is germination of oospore. In Pythium dibrianum, 
the exine of the oospore ruptures and the contents surrounded by the delicate intine grow into a hypha. The tip of the hypha swells, forms a vesicle-like sporangium into which the entire protoplast migrates. The terminal sporangium may produce zoospores or get detached. The detached sporangium germinates by forming germ tube and later develops into a new mycelium. Finally, let us look into the life cycle of pythium. Pythium reproduces asexually by zoospores, gemme, conidiospores, or by chlamydospores. Sexual reproduction is oogamous. It takes place with the help of antheridium forming the male nucleus and the oogonium forming the egg nucleus. A fertilization tube develops in the antheridium, penetrates the oogonial wall and reaches the egg. Fusion of male nucleus with the egg nucleus results in the formation of thick-walled oospore. The oospore nucleus undergoes meiotic division. The sporangium formed behaves either as a zoosporangium producing zoospores which develops into a new mycelium or it may directly germinate with the help of the germ tube into a mycelium. So today we have learnt in detail about Pythium debrianum with special emphasis on its mode of reproduction. I have some practice questions for you. Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video and write down the questions if you like. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comments section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.